Okay. Uh, frameworks are very helpful to solve uh, common problems and have been asked to, to develop. But what happens if we have to change uh, the framework of, or there is a new version and we have to update? So in this talk, I will try to, to explain um, how in our experience in the company that I work, uh, we try to, to, to go over that. Um, my name is Miguel Gallardo. I'm from Argentina. Yes, far, far away. <laughs> I'm far, far away from home. But I was just uh, traveling around Asia and get here. Uh, I have more than 15 years working with PHP and, and coding, currently for a US company called ProPoint. So uh, everything started because uh, we get the mission to add a new feature to our current product. Uh, the main product of our company is a P, uh, point of sale software. Um, the code for it is like uh, 10 years old. Um, a lot of uh, developers working on, on it uh, along the time. Um, when we start checking on the code to add the new feature, we found that is, uh, the code was too ugly, so ugly to, to keep working on it. Um, we start figuring out that we need to change that. So we found that um, all the business logic were all mixed with all the other spaghetti code. Um, this was started 10 years ago, so no frameworks, no uh, best practice, no everything. Um, test? No, not at all. No one. Um, so um, we started thinking about this and, oh, how, how we can uh, add the new feature. We are working all. Or um, so uh, we start thinking on making a new one, but uh, the, the product is so big, so we cannot uh, we do everything. So we start thinking, oh, okay, we like let's we uh, the new feature in a new code base with all the technology that is now. Uh, frameworks, uh, new PHP versions, unit testing. Um, but we have to keep the old code running. So we start uh, working on it. Um, we mostly that we can, we, 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 we was able to do that using the Strangler design pattern. But we, with this design pattern, we achieve two uh, independent code from the old product. But then we starting it, oh, but we are still uh, depending on of the frameworks. So what's next? Um, we starting, you know, that, and then we go, we get into a concept that is decoupling. So what is decoupling? That is a, the question that we first do. Um, there is, the goblin is a, like a negative word, so the, the concept is coupling. Um, basic uh, coupling is how much is, are related every part of the code, each one. Um, in, in this case, uh, how much we are uh, involved with the framework how much we are depending on the framework, and um, what can we do to avoid that? So uh, one of the, the benefits of, of the coupling um, is, is, is easy to, to see here, but in the code, when you have a, a lot of mixed code and spaghetti code, it's not easy to see these benefits. Um, basically made the, 
your code only works um, works in every environment, every framework. Um, so our code was uh, using Symfony, so I will focus more on Symfony, but uh, is is for every framework, every library. So one concept that we have in mind um, during all this stage is that the frameworks um, are generic um, and solve problems that um, we all have in, in, in the building of, of a application or site and that we don't want to reinvent the wheel but it's not part of the project, it's not part of the core of the business. So we have that in mind. The framework is not a part of the application. And then this is um, how it's mostly a, a um, application inside a framework, using a framework. Um, but we, so we can isolate these three parts or two parts mostly. The one that this fully depending on, on the framework for the basic of the applications, main meaning uh, data access or all the um, input output uh, and that. Um, the other part is the, um, the code that is not related to anything from the framework or, or the environment, but just the business logic and, and the core of the business. So we start uh, splitting that in three main concepts, services, repositories, and entities. Um, we start working on, on that kind of paradigm. But before I uh, start showing the code and, and, and what mean each of these um, concepts, we set some rules that we try to, to follow. Um, these rules act mostly like a um, cost style also, and some rules for developers. Some, uh, there are rules that can be broke because uh, some are very hard to follow, but we try. One of these is the love of Demeter, that um, basically is that each piece of code should be no less than, the, the, you should we have only a limit knowledge of the other parts of the, of the application of the, of the piece of code to, to be only one small piece and isolate for every, every other piece. Um, this, this small um, phrase is like a, an easy way to, to see it. Uh, only talk with friends and not with strangers. So uh, it's, a, it's an easy way to, to remember. The other one is the single responsibility principle. Um, this is uh, to avoid to have a, a huge class or a huge piece of code doing a lot of things. So if the piece of code is only for a customer, only holds the customer data, but nothing else, um, including um, the, the entity, for example, that we'll see on the next um, on the next slide, only hold the data, but doesn't take care of the um, of saving the data or getting just as a, um, um, a container of the data. And this is also um, another concept that we have that is uh, we, if we need to add some functionality to an entity, we should try to extend and not modify the, 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 the previous entity. Uh, this is also to avoid to, to start adding keep adding uh, functionality to, to a piece of code or something like that. So 
starting with the with the, the parts of the of the stack. The first one is the entity. Only is uh, representing um, a single vector of data. Not even a, a it's not a um, a table or a database extraction only holds the information and the description of the data that we are we are using. Um, this bar is only uh, it's not doesn't include anything from the framework. It's just a, a simple PHP class. For example, this one for customer. Um, only if we can see here that it's only keeping the um, the, the, the data in in, um, in runtime is not saving is not doing anything just the entity and the entity works with the repository the repository could be uh, related to a a data table from from a database or something like that, but it's not um, implementing the, the 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 logic to save or to retrieve the information from the database. It's only an interface with um, defining uh, what we need from the from the part that is in the abstraction, the abstraction layer. And this part is also uh, a business or logic, business logic representation. It's not related to to the current framework or the database that we are using. In this case, for the customer, it's, it's easy to see that it's only defined that we have, we need the, the a, a function to get all the customer f for a phone number, but it's not implementing. Uh, so uh, it's not, yeah, on the side, that only is a, a declaration. And for the repository, uh, it's part of the business logic, but not for the framework. And um, with the repository, there is the implementation, that is this one. In this case, using Doctrine. Uh, in this case, he's um, defining how the data will be safe or retrieved or anything. And this one is, is uh, dependent of the framework. But I think the, the advantage to decode the code is that if we need to change the database or the framework, we only have to implement this, this, this class. And that's all. We don't, add, we don't need to, to modify the business logic or the the, the core logic, and the most important part is the services. This is the part where all the magic is, um, the, all the business logic is. Um, I didn't include in this uh, in this concept, but um, we are using in Symfony the events to communicate all these parts. So the service works with events to trigger uh, actions. So if the service needs to save a uh, customer, will just trigger an event and not we uh, it's not calling directly the, the repository. With the events, dispatcher at the events, we are um, we are making this part independent of all the other parts. If the uh, is not is there is not a, um, a repository interface to save the customer no problem the service will keep working will just trigger the events and that's all but we not it's not depending on the repository um, that is event subscribers this is how it looks And we can see here that this um, during the events after a, a customer has been created, and how the 
the service communicate with other services. And the other part that is not part of our logic, but is part of the framework, the controllers and the view, this part is obviously part of the framework. We are depending on that. But it's only working as as an interface to the to the to the user through the browser or or API or anything, and just like a pass through from the input output and the and the services. That's all. We are not adding any logic here, neither the controller or the view. This is the controller, one of the controller. Um, you can see that in this controller is all in uh, calling or, or using the services. There is no logic about how it should be used, only calling the service. The service will take care, take care of, the, um, of, of the logic, of the business logic. So, the, the first um, graphic that I made is a simplification of the entire stack. Uh, is the, the current implementation is uh, like more um, complex, but in the end it's as simple as the first graphic. And this is yeah. this is how the stack is done. It's more easy to see here how each part is independent of any other. We have the services. We have, first of all, we have two models with two different services. This could be for customer or and for a store, for example. Two different modules. Um, each one has a service that is independent of everything else. And it communicates every part through events. And we can see how this, uh, the split between the parties, uh, framework dependent, and our part that is only for the, for the business logic. Um, this is the approach that we took. Uh, we are still working on it, and uh, we are spending almost two years on this. So we are evolving every, every day. Um, but there is a one thing that don't use the coupling everywhere. Because it uh, looks like nice and oh, it's a good idea, but it's not for every, every code. Um, c could be... Could be abuse and... and it depends if the type of project, the size of the project, the size of the team. Um, as with every tool or every technology that we have, we have to try to use the right tool for the right problem and not, uh, not use for every part. Um, so uh, we have to be smart to, to, to get with this or any other technology or big plastics or design pattern just to use it smart. And this is a, like a, a conclusion that we, we have. Um, this is not part of, of, the, um, of the decoupling, but there are, there are some concepts that we can useful to decouple the code without uh, implementing all the splitting in the in the code in, in the framework and, and that's all. Um, basically, it's like we should think um, each piece of code as more independent as we can. Um, so it's not depending on any other. Um, the, this way we can avoid a lot of uh, problems with that. Um, of course, using design patterns, but again, it's not uh, 
using the same pattern in any part of the code or any piece of code, we should be smart to use where it's needed. Um, and one of the main concepts that we throw is the layers or architecture. So it's like thinking of every part of the application in a level from the user from, to the um, database that will help to, to keep uh, the code um, more clean and, and split. So mostly this is uh, our experience working with the Copeland and, and Symfony. Um, I hope that this useful and informative. Uh, there is a, a lot of their concept that we can use to, to, to get into uh, the Copeland code, but the main objective is to have a, a project that we can be uh, updated and will be in good shape over the time. So thank you for, for the opportunity and for the, thank you. We have some time for a couple of questions. Is it okay, Miguel? Yeah, it's good. Okay, um, anyone have questions? Mm -hmm. Hello. Um, you've mentioned about decoupling, decoupling um, should not be used everywhere, but for certain types of projects. So can you cite examples of projects that we can use uh, decoupling efficiently? Um, in our case, we use it because um, our product will not change over time, mostly. Um, but we need to keep uh, adding features. Um, we, keep, we need to keep uh, with the last, last technologies for frameworks and PHP version and that's all. So uh, I think that this concept uh, should be used in, in projects, in large projects mostly. Because all this um, separation of, of parts also is very useful to, to work in large uh, teams. So we can split every part of code to a, a, a development group or developers. Um, it's, it depends on every project. I think that when you get the, the need to use, you will know. Um, but yeah, it, it's, not, it's not a thing that, oh, I have this new project I will use. Because, but on the other hand, it's like a, um, a set of, of best practice and uh, um, ways to do the work that can be used in, in every project. Or, um, for example, to, to follow the three rules, the Dimitri rules and the, the other two rules. It's like a, a concept that we can use in any project and will be very useful to have a clean code and, and with all, uh, um, we're using all the technology that we have now the, for unit testing, for deploying on, on the cloud and things like that. So I think that um, most of uh, uh, one only concept I think that it's useful to take some parts of this and start using on, on, on any project, yeah. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Miguel. Thank you.